In this video, we're going to examine the relative reactivity of tertiary hydrogens to radical chlorination by looking at the products of radical chlorination of 2-methylpropane. So 2-methylpropane is, is this compound here, basically propane with a methyl group attached. And you put it with some chlorine gas and irradiate that mixture with UV light. Here's the product distribution that you'll observe. You'll observe 36% would be 2-methyl-2-chloropropane. Two or 2-chloro-2-methylpropane, and uh, the rest will be this primary chlorination product here, which is 1-chloro-2-methylpropane. Uh, So 36% will be this tertiary chlorination product, and 64% will be this will be this uh, primary chlorination product. And remember that both of these products are uh, they proceed by the radical halogenation mechanism, which after initiation and furnishing of the chlorine radical entails uh, entails formation of a of a uh, two propyl radical and it'll either be or two uh, two methyl propyl radical it'll, it'll either be the radical will either be a second or tertiary radical excuse me a tertiary radical with the unpaired electron on this carbon or it'll be a primary radical with the unpaired electron on one of these one of these three carbons. These are all equivalent carbons. And uh, if you remember from the hyperconjugation video, tertiary radicals are more stable than primary radicals. So why is it that we observe less tertiary product than we do primary product? Well, there's only, in propane, there's only one or 2-methylpropane, there's only one tertiary hydrogen, whereas there are nine primary hydrogens, right? So if we want to actually determine the relative reactivity to chlorination of tertiary hydrogens to, to primary hydrogens, so if we want to, want to find the relative reactivity, the ratio of relative reactivities to chlorination of Tertiary hydrogens. Uh, sorry about that. I had to pause the video for a second to clean up some of this handwriting. So, if we wanted to find the ratio of relative reactivities to chlorination of tertiary hydrogens to primary hydrogens, what we do is we'd divide the observed ratio, or this experimental ratio, observed ratio by the statistical ratio. And remember the statistical ratio just takes into account the number of tertiary hydrogens or, or really the the number of hydrogens at each that whose abstraction would lead to each product. So here you have nine primary hydrogens that could lead to this uh, one chloro two methylpropane product. So these three three on this carbon, three on this carbon, three on this carbon all of which are equivalent, right? And uh, here you only have one one hydrogen on, on this tertiary carbon whose abstraction would lead to this product. But the observed ratio is uh, 36 to 64. So 36 tertiary to 64 primary. But the statistical ratio is really only one tertiary, because you only have one tertiary hydrogen, to nine primary. 
Okay, so the, the ratio of the, these, uh, these two ratios is uh, 36 over 64 divided by 1 ninth. And that's the same thing as 36 over 64 times 9. And that works out to be approximately 5.06. And in your chemistry book, you probably see that rounded to 5. So what this means is every tertiary hydrogen is five times as likely to be abstracted during radical chlorination as a primary hydrogen. So in the previous video, in a in, in a previous video, we saw I'm not sure whether it was the immediately previous video, but in in a previous video, we saw that the ratio of relative reactivities to chlorination of secondary hydrogens to primary hydrogens like secondary hydrogens to primary hydrogens this is again to chlorination remember that there are different numbers for other halogenations such as bromination or fluorination but for chlorination, the ratio of relative reactivities of secondary to primary hydrogens is 3 to 1. Or no, it's, sorry, it's, it's about 4, 4 to 1. 4 to 1. So 4 secondary to 1 primary. And here we saw that it's uh, the ratio of tertiary hydrogens, reactivity of tertiary hydrogens to primary hydrogens and this is once again chlorination is 5 to 1 so 5 tertiary to 1 primary so if we had a compound that contained all three types primary secondary and tertiary hydrogens and you could also have methyl hydrogens but we're not considering that here if you had a compound that had all three types of hydrogens, the tertiary would be five times as likely to be extracted as the primary. The secondary would be four times as likely to be extracted as the primary. So if you wanted a, if you wanted a ratio that encompassed the reactivities of the primary, secondary, and tertiary hydrogens, you'll have a five to four to one ratio of tertiary to secondary to primary and remember these these numbers are only for for um, handwriting is getting messier and messier that's why uh, I take a little break to uh, clean it up so the ratio to chlorination of tertiary to secondary to primary hydrogens is 5 to 4 to 1. And in a future video, we'll actually look at a problem that involves all of these types of hydrogens. So a chlorination, a radical chlorination example of a, an alkane that contains primary, secondary, and tertiary hydrogens. And we'll use this relative reactivity ratio to determine the product distribution.